Hi there guys, it's John here for Vandalism Sounds, and this tutorial is going to be about multiband compression. I'm going to break down exactly what it does, so you have a full understanding of how multiband dynamics work, and I'm going to give you an example of its use so that you can see it in action. So first of all, I want to really quickly go over some compression definitions, just so that we're all on the same page going into this tutorial on dynamics. Compression is simply reducing the dynamic range of a signal. And when I say dynamic range, I'm talking about the difference between the loud and the quiet parts of a signal. The reason that we compress things is to achieve a more consistent volume. For example, we don't want the quiet parts of a vocal recording to be lost under the rest of the song, or for the loud parts to stick out over the top of the rest of the song. So we use compression to help even out the volume, or the dynamics. There are two ways that you can reduce the dynamic range of a sound. Downwards compression and upwards compression. Let's have a look visually at what compressed audio looks like compared to uncompressed audio. So here, you can see that I've got an uncompressed vocal recording and the same vocal recording just compressed on this bottom section here. As you can see, the dynamic range is much larger on the uncompressed vocal. So here, we can see a big difference between the quiet parts and the loud parts and much less of a difference in the compressed section. Downwards compression is the most common form of compression, and it's the type of compression that most people refer to when they're talking about compression. What downwards compression does is reduce the level of the signal by a set ratio once it passes a certain threshold. For example, if you set a threshold of minus 20 dB and a ratio of 2 to 1, and the signal goes up to minus 10 dB, which is 10 dB over that threshold that you set, minus 20, then the volume will be brought down to just minus 15 dB. The reason for this is because the 2 to 1 ratio says for every 2 dB of signal that goes over the threshold, only allow 1 to go through. A ratio of 5 to 1 would mean that for every 5 dB that goes over the threshold, only 1 would go through, and so on. Upwards compression is the much less common form of compression, and it's used in multiband compressors. What upwards compression does is increase the level of the signal by a set ratio when it's below a certain threshold which you set. For example, if the signal is 10 dB under the threshold which you've set and the ratio is 0.5 to 1, the signal will be increased to just 5 dB below the threshold. It's still a form of compression, even though it's making sound louder, because it's still reducing the dynamic range, i.e. the difference between the loudest part and the quietest part, that's still being reduced. Now, let's jump into Ableton and have a look at the multiband compressor in there. We're going to start with the multiband dynamics plugin, which comes with Ableton Standard and Suite. Now, this is a multiband compressor with three frequency bands, low, mid, and high. This allows you to control the dynamics separately across these three frequency bands, as opposed to a normal compressor which just affects the whole sound or the whole frequency spectrum. Now the way that you decide what frequencies are being affected by what band is by the controls over here. So the low band controls everything below this frequency. So everything from 150 hertz below is being controlled by these controls which control the low band. The high band controls everything above this frequency just here. So everything above 2.5k is being controlled by this high band and these controls and everything in between, so 150 to 2.5k, is being controlled by this mid-band just here. You can bypass or solo each band by pressing the bypass button just here, so the input gain, the output gain, and any other settings will be bypassed, and you can also solo, audio-wise, a certain frequency band, so you can solo just the highs, just the mids, or just the lows, and I'm going to demonstrate that as well when we start using this multiband compressor. Now looking at the main section of this plugin, we can see visually where the incoming signal gets split into the different frequency bands which I just described. So I'm going to play some audio and I want you to have a look at the bars that will come up from this side and bounce around here. And there are going to be some orange bars and some yellow tips at the end of the bars. So if you have a look at those. <laughs> So, you saw those orange bars with the low frequencies here, the mids and the highs just there. Uh, along here, you've got the decibel scale for uh, the incoming volume. 
and let's explain what the orange bars and the yellow tips meant. So, the yellow tips represent the input level, so that's before any processing has happened. Those yellow tips will tell you on this scale what the incoming level is of that certain frequency band. So, the level of the high frequencies coming in is determined by the yellow tip in this high frequency section. What the orange bar represented is the output signal. So once we turn these settings on and start dialing in some settings, that orange band and the yellow tip are going to be at different places, which represent either gain reduction or gain addition. So as we get in and dial some settings in, you'll see what I mean there, but it's worth knowing that little difference. Down here, we've got a soft knee and an RMS setting. The RMS allows you to switch between peak and RMS, so this is the volume that the compressor is looking at, so RMS is more of an average volume and peak is more of the, the peak volumes. Next we come onto these TBA tabs. Now, T, um, I'll point out actually at this point, when you hover over anything, over here in this info view, uh, it'll tell you what it's, uh, it'll tell you what the setting is. So, we hover over this, the T is for time parameters, attack and release. So that will determine how quickly the compression comes in once the threshold is crossed and then the release determines how long it takes for that compression to stop happening once the threshold is crossed again. The B is for the below threshold which is this threshold just here and this will make a lot more sense once we start using it uh, but essentially this is where you'll set the ratio and the below threshold for dynamic control. And the above threshold does the same as we were doing for these bands but for these bands just here. So as you can see, this will control the threshold amount. And also when we start to dial in some settings, we can change the ratio, which means we'll either be compressing upwards or down. Over here, we've got the output gain controls. So once the signal has been affected by the compressor, we can then add some gain, sort of like makeup gain on a normal compressor. We can do that for each individual frequency band or for the overall compressor just here. Now this time control uh, is like a universal control for these attack and release times. So similarly to this output dial being an overall volume control separate to these, this will turn up or decrease the attack and release times for the overall compressor. And then here we've got sort of what a dry and wet knob would be. So um, it allows you to do this multiband compression sort of parallel so you can blend in some of the dry signal um, so 0% is completely a dry signal with none of these effects coming through. 100% is just the wet signal going out, so just the compressed signal. And you can blend that with this dial. As with any controls in Ableton, um, you can single click on them and press delete to set them back to their default. So let's jump in and actually have a go at using multiband dynamics on this little track that I've got here. <laughs> So while the ratios are set to zero, nothing is happening. Nothing's being reduced uh, or turned up. So what we need to do is dial in some settings. And I'm going to start with the low frequencies. So as I mentioned, you can solo each frequency band. So if I solo the lows, you can hear just the lows there. Now what I want to do is pick out um, whereabouts in the frequency spectrum my uh, fundamental frequency on the basses because uh, that's what I want to include in this low frequency band as well as the kick drum. So here you can see the fundamental frequency of my bass and then sorry I'll unmute this for a second and here you can see that that second harmonic in the bass that's sort of reacting to the bass and that's going down to about here, which is 160 hertz. So set this to 160. Then this low band is incorporating just my kick drum and the fundamental note, which is the lowest note of my bass frequencies. Now I'm going to set the threshold um, to a point that's just uh, just below where the yellow tip is bouncing up to. So it's pretty much good what it is, where it is about there. So I'm going to start dialing in some compression here and you can see the ratio changing just there, which you can also adjust here. And that's given me a ratio of two to one. Now, when I play this, you'll see the amount of gain reduction pop up as a number just here.
there we go so we won't go too drastic we're going for a few db of gain reduction there on those low frequencies and now what i'm going to do um, is that's attenuating the, the sort of higher bits and what I want to do is bring the lower bits up so they are st stay staying consistently at the same level so I'm going to bring up this below band and set it around here so that when the level drops below here it's brought back up and the way that I do that you can control the ratios by clicking and dragging up or down inside the band in this main view so set that back down to zero in the before threshold, that's what we're controlling at the moment. Uh, sorry, not zero, one. And we'll turn that up a bit. So I'm going to A and B this. It's going to be subtle, um, but you should be able to hear the difference uh, of, of what I've done there. So it's just gelling it together a little bit and there's obviously a volume in a uh, difference in volume as well so i'm going to add a little bit of makeup gain um let's double check the gain reduction that we're getting a few db so let's add gain until it sounds like it's at the same sort of volume as it was previously start with a couple So we're looking for it to be the same volume once we A and B it. Start with it off. Turn it back on. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So let's listen to that in the whole song now. point out you really want to be listening to the low frequencies um, how the bass is sitting with the kick and how consistent the volume is is where you're going to hear the difference So it's subtle, as I say, but I think it's really it's raining in the bass and the kick a little bit just to sit nicely at the bottom of the mix there. Now let's go on to the mids and let's have a look at where the input line is coming up to. So we'll go down to there, bring the ratio down. A few dB of gain reduction again on the mids there. So just keeping those mids under control. Cool. So we'll pop that back in with the track. First of all, actually, let's add some gain back on. Not too much needed. That's good. with everything on and off. So what I think that's doing is, as I say, bringing in the low end a little bit and giving the mids a little bit more room uh, to be heard. So obviously you're going to be hearing those subby frequencies if this was played out in a club. Um, and then the mids are just standing out a little bit nicer because they're not 
Um, I think it's nice to have a little bit of clarity between the real low end and then the mids, and I think it's it's doing that quite nicely in the, in these low mids here. Cool. So I have a little bit of a different approach with the high frequencies that I've uh, worked out from playing around with this song. Um, it's actually a nice way to sort of clean up the high end and get a little bit more clarity in in the hi hats and whatnot. So let's solo the highs. Bring this down to about here. Bring in some gentle compression. A few dB again of gain reduction. And then bring this up here, but instead of um, applying compression, I'm gonna dial this down. So it's actually acting a little bit like a gate. Okay, so let's listen to that in the track. Oh, sorry, I'll add, do the gain reduction, gain addition. So that's how I would personally use multiband compression on this track. Uh, it differs from producer to producer, depending on the type of sound that you're going for, uh, depending on the kind of sound you want in the track, depending on what you've got in your track. Um, it's all down to personal preference really, but that's been a little walkthrough of what the controls do inside the multiband compressor and a little bit about how to use them in a track situation. Now I've been John for Vandalism Sounds and for more tutorials like this, head over to the Vandalism Sounds website where you can subscribe for new tutorials every month.